Hello, everybody, and welcome to Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. We're here today for, hopefully, <laughs> another fantastic episode of Poems for the Soul, where I share five poems from five different poets in an effort to expand our um, awareness of this amazing genre that's out here, but also to invite us to start to create poetry from our own soul. So let's get started with poem number one. This one is by Leanne O'Sullivan, and it's called The Chord. I used to lie on the floor for hours after school with the phone cradled between my shoulder and my ear, a plate of cold rice to my left, my school books to the right, twirling the cord between my fingers, I spoke to friends who recognized the language of our realm. Throats and lungs swollen, we talked into the heart of the night, toying with the idea of hair dye and suicide, about the boys who didn't love us, who we loved too much, the pang of the nights. And each sentence was new territory, like a door someone was rushing into. The glass shattering with delirium, with knowledge and fear. My mother never complained about the phone bill. What it cost for her daughter to disappear behind the door, watching the cord stretching its muscle away from her. Perhaps she thought it was the only way she could reach me, sending me away to speak in the underworld. As long as I was speaking, she could put my ear to the tenuous earth and allow me to listen, to decipher. And these were the elements of my mother. The earth wire, the burning cable, as if she flowed into the room with me to somehow say, stay where I can reach you. The dim room, the dark earth, Speak of this, and when you feel removed from it, I will pull the cord and take you back towards me. Stephen Dunn on the death of a colleague. She taught theater, so we gathered in the theater. We praised her voice, her knowledge, how good she was with Gada, and just four months later with Gigi. She was 50, the problem in the liver. Each of us recalled an incident in which she'd been kind or witty. I told about being unable to speak from my diaphragm and how she made me lie down placed her hand where the failure was, and showed me how to breathe. But afterwards, I only could do it when I lay down, and that became a joke, between us. And I told it as my offering to the audience. I was on stage, and I heard myself wishing to be impressive. Someone else spoke of her cats, And no one spoke of her face or the last few parties. The fact I had avoided her for months. It was a student's turn to speak. A sophomore, one of her actors. She was a drunk, he said. Often came to class reeking. Sometimes he couldn't look at her. The blotches, the puffiness. And yet she was a great teacher. He loved her, but thought someone should say what everyone knew because she didn't die by accident. Everyone was crying. Everyone was crying and it was almost over now. The remaining speaker, a historian, said he'd cut his speech short. And the chairman stood up 
as if by habit, said something about loss, and thanked us for coming. None of us moved except some students to the student who'd spoken, and then others moved to him, across dividers, down aisles, to his side of the stage. The Space Heater by Sharon Olds On ten below zero day it was on, near the patient's chair, the old heater kept by the analyst's couch at the end, like the infant's headstone that was added near the foot of my father's grave. And it was hot, with the almost laughing satire of a fire's heat. The little coils like hairs in hell. And it was making a group of sick noises. I wanted the doctor to turn it off, but I couldn't seem to ask, so I just stared. But it didn't budge. The doctor turned his heavy, soft palm outward toward me, inviting me to speak. I said, If you're cold, are you cold? But if it's on for me... He held his palm out toward me. I tried to ask, but I only muttered. But he said, Of course, as if I had asked. And he stood and approached the heater and then stood on one foot and threw himself toward the wall with one hand and with the other hand reached down behind the couch to pull the plug out. I looked away. I had not known he would have to bend like that. And I was so moved that he would act undignified to help me that I cried not trying to stop but as if the moans made sentences which bore some human message if he would cast himself toward the outlet for me as if bending with me in my old shame and horror then I would rest on his heart on his art and the heater purred like a creature, or the familiar of a creature, or the child of a familiar, the father of a child, the spirit of a father, the healing of a spirit, the vision of healing, the heat of vision, the power of the heat, the pleasure of the power. Numbers by Mary Cornish I like the generosity of numbers. The way, for example, they are willing to count anything or anyone. Two pickles, one to the room, eight dancers dressed as swans. I like the domesticity of addition. Add two cups of milk and stir. The sense of plenty. Six plums on the ground, three more falling from the tree. And multiplication school of fish times fish, whose silver bodies breed beneath the shadow of a boat. Even subtraction is never loss, just addition somewhere else. Five sparrows take away two the two in someone else's garden now. There's an amplitude to long division as it opens Chinese takeout box by paper box. Inside every folded cookie, a new fortune. And I never fail to be surprised by the gift of an odd remainder. Foot loose at the end. 47 divided by 11 equals 4, with 3 remaining. Three boys beyond their mother's call. 
two Italians off to sea. One sock that isn't anywhere you look. Lines by Martha Collins. Draw a line, write a line, there. Stay in line, hold the line. A glance between the lines is fine, but don't turn corners, cross, cut in, go over or out. Between two points of no returns, a line of flight. Between two points of views, a line of vision. But a line of thought is rarely straight. An open line's no party line, however fine you, your point. A line of fire communicates, but drop your weapons and drop your line. Consider the shortest distance from X to Y. Let X be me, let Y be you. Thanks so much, beautiful friends, for coming by. Please share this with anyone you think might feel encouraged by it.